Hey guys, it's Mr. Kennedy back again to talk to you a little bit about meiosis and sexual reproduction. Now we've been talking about mitosis in the previous chapters and now in this chapter we're going to start talking about meiosis or meiosis, depending on how you like to say it. Now to delve into this, we need to talk about asexual and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is reproduction in which creates identical copies of the organism that it is reproducing. You create clones, if you will, because you only have one parent. So it's down here at the bottom, you have this hydra, and you have off to the side of this hydra, you see a piece budding off, or, and this budding is what will create the new hydra. So it's going to be an identical clone to the hydra itself. And if you have six chromosomes in the original parent, then you have six chromosomes in each of the two that are created. That's asexual. Sexual reproduction is dealing with meiosis, and you get genetically different offspring because it's a combination of two parents' DNA, and that's what we're going to talk about here. So how exactly does it work? Well, we know in us that we have 46 chromosomes, but we can't give all 46 to our children, and our spouse give all 46 to our child, and that would end up with 92 chromosomes in our child. We know that humans all have 46, so something has to be going on, and what happens is even though we have 46 in our cells, our cells go through a process of meiosis and creates 23 in the eggs and 23 in the sperm cell. So when these two unite or get fertilized through their fertilization, we create what is called a zygote that has 46. And this is where the new baby is. Okay? So how do we go about this process? Well, Meiosis is called reduction division because not only are you dividing the number of cells, you're also reducing the chromosome number. And it's a very unique case. Our diploid number, our 2N number, our 2N number is 46. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go from a cell that has 46 chromosomes, a diploid number, to a cell that has a 1N number of 23. This will be our gametes, our sex cells. So diploid, the 2N, means two, so you have two sets of all the chromosomes. Haploid means you have half of the chromosomes that are there. Now I've got a warning tag down here. Meiosis evolved from mitosis, so the stages and machinery are very similar. They look very, sim very almost the same. But the processes are really different, so don't get confused. All right, if you remember, in mitosis, we did I- PP mat, um, interface, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. In meiosis, we go I, P mat, P mat. You're going to go through prophase twice, metaphase twice, anaphase twice, telophase twice. And here are the steps listed. Now, the good thing is the same things happen sim close to what you remember in mitosis. Well, at least down at the bottom. Okay, so I'll talk about this in a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so let's look at this. If we start out with a cell like over here on the right that has two chromosomes, it's going to go through interphase, and it's going to replicate the chromosomes and have what's called sister chromatins. All right, and then it's going to go through meiosis 1. Meiosis 1 is division of and separation of homologous pairs. So here's your homologous chromosomes, and they're going to separate. So... What we here have here is our 2N number is equal to 2. Our 2N number is still equal to 2 here, but we're talking about a double chromosomes. So our 1N number will be a double 1, and our 1N number over here will be a double 1 chromosome. And then that separates, and you end up with 1N going to 1, 1N going to 1, etc. Now, I know this is kind of foreign language to you, but really... Meiosis 2, this result down here, whenever we start from a single chromosome and go to from one end to one end, this is just like mitosis. So meiosis 2, the second division, is just like you remember mitosis being. Now meiosis 1 is a little bit different, but what we say is that meiosis 1 is the separation of homologous pairs, Meiosis 2 is the separation of sister chromatids. So let's look at these real briefly. The first step of meiosis is the duplication of the DNA. This happens during interphase. And why do we do this anyway? Well, remember I said that it evolved from similar machinery as the mitosis. So we have 
the same machinery is being used. And the DNA replicated in the S phase and interphase of meiosis, just like it does in mitosis. So we start out with, you know, six chromosomes, one, two, three, four, five, six, three red, three blue. We end up with a two end number of still six, but they're double stranded. Two blue ones, two blue ones, two blue ones, two red, two red, two red. So a total of six individual, I mean, excuse me, 12 individual, but six pairs. All right. Now, when we go through meiosis one, after replicating them, what happens is you have the homologous pairs are hooked together at a synapsis. That's just where they're held together, and they form what's called a tetrad. That's two homologous pairs, and these homologous pairs at this tetrad are going to separate, all right, during anaphase, and we're going to end up with cells down here at the bottom that each one has one of each kind, all right? That's the reduction part. We've reduced it. So meiosis is re one is reduction. Now, the second division is meiosis two, and this is going to be the separation of cis chromatin. So we start out with the results of meiosis one right here. There's results. And we're not going to go through interphase, so we're not going to recopy it again. So when you go through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and finally splits, we're going to end up with one red one and one blue one going this way, one red one and one blue one going this way, one blue, one red, one red, one blue. So we end up with sperm cells down here at the bottom after telophase that each one have two chromosomes in them now, that are single-stranded. Now, the steps of meiosis are here. Meiosis 1 has interphase, prophase 1, two, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1. Basically, you go from reduction to vision. You go from a diploid cell to a one end cell. In meiosis 2, you just go through these four steps and you go from one end to one end. It's exactly like mitosis. Now, something happens along the line. It's called crossing over, often occurs in prophase. And if you look, sometimes when this tetrad is formed here, when this tetrad is formed, the chromosomes will lay over each other and exchange genetic material whenever they're in the synapsis. So if you see the red and the blue laying over, the red got a little piece of blue and the blue got a little piece of the red. This is going to increase variability in the species. It's actually not necessarily a bad thing. It, um, it just increases the chances of all of us organisms being different. Now, there's basically three steps that occur in crossing over. You have to have the crossing over part. You have to have the breakage of the DNA in each chromosome, and then it has to refuse to create new traits. Now, what's the advantage of this crossing over is that it continuously gives us more and more traits. Now, this could make the organism less likely to survive, but it's a greater likelihood that's going to help the organism to survive and adapt to its environment. All right, I hope this helped you understand meiosis a little bit, and I will talk to you later.